Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with my extremely, extremely belated February wrap up. Uh, we have just had the, well, I was going to film this first thing in March, I think, or even late February, but we had the Adelaide Festival, which opened the end of February and uh, ran until last weekend. And then as you can probably hear from my voice after one too many late nights, I then came down with a cold. So that's a lesson for all of us about the importance of sleep. Um, but I'm feeling much better. So I thought better late than never, I'll wrap up the books that I read uh, in February, which does feel like a distant memory, but some of them were really, really good, so worth talking about still. The first one is A Burning by Mega Majumdar, and this one we did on the podcast, it does feel like ages ago, but it's a really fresh, wonderful contemporary novel set in India, and it's about Jivan, the main protagonist is Jivan, who is a schoolgirl. she's about to go to university, I think, about to go to college, and she's a Muslim girl. She comes home from school having seen an attack on a train and she writes something on Facebook about the Kolobagan tra train attack. Um, if the police don't help ordinary people like you and me, if the police watched them die, doesn't that mean that the government is also a terrorist? So that sets off a huge uh, chain reaction in which she ends up being arrested and sent to prison. And so we follow that strand of the story, but also the two other main characters are Lovely, who's a Hijra woman and a really um, out there, very endearing character uh, who wants to be a Bollywood star and her scenes are just wonderful. And then we have P.T. Sir, who's a gym teacher or PE teacher who taught Jivan and he's the classic sort of mediocre uh, teacher who dreams of just having a bit more money and then gets caught up in government circles and starts earning a bit of money through that where he can then buy a fantastic fridge or, or a television that he goes shopping for with his wife and sort of hits the big time and it's his moral decline I suppose that we start to watch and he it's really really well done it's very fresh it's propulsive it, the pace is quite fast so you keep reading keeps you engaged and it, there's a sense of humour, but it also does portray a lot of injustices and a lot of issues in India today. So I recommend that. That's A Burning by Mega Majumdar. Then I read Pandora's Jar, Women in the Greek Myths by Natalie Haynes. And uh, this was wonderful as I expected it. I had high expectations because I loved her novel, A Thousand Ships. So this is nonfiction. And Natalie Haynes goes through the women in Greek myths and she selects uh, Pandora, for example, Jocasta, Helen, Medusa, the Amazons, Penelope, Medea, Eurydice, or depending how you say it, and goes through how they've been portrayed in literature, in ancient Greek mythology, in the by the poets of that time going through to today and how we have a view of them as characters or as women and when she goes through and really looks at the ancient texts and the original texts, um, Pandora for example, we know Pandora's box um, as if she sort of opened a box and let out all the evil in the world into the world whereas originally it was a jar which was actually quite easy to break so she wasn't uh, such a manipulative character as she's sometimes portrayed and just by going back to the original source um, Natalie Haynes shows some of those anomalies and um, well, the sexism in how they've been portrayed in more modern times, um, but also looks at modern day portrayals. So in the chapter on the Amazons, for example, she also looks at the Wonder Woman film with Gal Gadot or Gal Gadot. I'm not sure how you say that one either. Anyway, what Natalie Haynes brings to this is her extensive knowledge, deep, deep knowledge of Greek mythology, which she's been studying, I think, since she was a 12 or 14 and also a sense of humor so it's really engaging it's very accessible and it really brings the myths to life and 
Um, well, the other thing, of course, she brings to it is her love of the Greek mythology and Greek history, ancient Greek history, um, which is really infectious. So it's a wonderful and enlightening read. So I recommend it. Natalie Haynes was a guest at Adelaide Writers Week, as was Megan Majumdar actually, on the live stream because she was in the UK and we couldn't bring out our international writers this year. And it was wonderful because we we were in the gardens, so we could all gather together, you know, on, in checkerboard seating. And then the, the uh, Tom Wright, who conducted the interview, was on stage, and then Natalie was on screen, and she could see us. Um, and she was actually quite moved and said, it's really, um, you know, I'm envious to see you all gather together, the sun's shining, and she, you know, it was really quite moving, and I think she enjoyed it, and it was a great interview. So I think that will come out as a podcast soon, so you can look out for all of the Adelaide Writers Week talks. Um, so that was Pandora's Jar. These are actually a lot of Adelaide Writers Week authors because I was reading in February to get ready for Writers Week at the end of February and beginning of March. So Nisha Dolan, Exciting Times, and she was in conversation, I think, with Jessie too, I think, who wrote A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing. So I missed that, but I'm going to catch that up on the podcasts. So Exciting Times, which you would have heard of, is a mod, it's a contemporary novel. I think it came out last year and it's set in Hong Kong. The main character is, oh my gosh, what was her name? Ava, who's 23-ish and she's an expat from Ireland living in Hong Kong. Um, she takes up with a old, well, she describes him as an older man. He's a banker. And I started to think of all sorts of, of sleazy old bankers but in fact he's 28 so he's not that old but then he goes back he has to go back to the UK and so she's uh, hanging around in his apartment in Hong Kong and then she develops a friendship with Edith and it goes on from there so it's sort of a I wouldn't say romantic comedy it's a coming of age almost um, I didn't love it. We did it on the podcast. There was a lot in there that was very well observed. It was really interesting. It kept me engaged to the end. So I did read, I felt compelled to keep reading right to the end. And I quite liked the Hong Kong setting, although at times I felt like it was just ticking boxes of yes, you see this in Hong Kong, yes, you do that in Hong Kong. There was, and some of that rang true and some of it didn't to me. Annie, I think, enjoyed it a bit more than I did. And I wondered if maybe I'm too old for millennial fiction because this is described as millennial fiction. So I think the author is about 30 um, or late 20s and, you know, I'm in my 40s now and I just, some of it seemed a bit much ado about nothing in the context of people that have real issues in the world uh, she seemed to be complaining she said she the character Ava was very concerned that everyone else has more money than her and yet she's not really living in poverty she's she's has enough wherewithal to move to Hong Kong live as a teacher and support herself there as an expat so relatively privileged existence and so the complaining and the endlessly comparing other people's money and, you know, they can afford this and they can afford that really wore thin to me. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to know if you've read it, what you thought. I didn't mind it, but I didn't love it. Um, so that was exciting times. And then a book that really blew me away, which was Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor, translated by Sophie Hughes. And again, Fernanda Melchor was a guest at Writers Week and it was a wonderful session. This just took my breath away and really was like a whirlwind, it, like a, a hurricane, as the title suggests. So it's set in a small village in Mexico. The main character is described as a witch and she's found killed early on in the book. And then we circle around the characters and Fernanda Melchor has described it as having to circle around and not quite get to the 
um, she couldn't go straight to the culprit or straight to the perpetrator, but almost has to circle around like a hurricane and then um, end up in the eye of the storm, as it were. And the, so the structure of the book is we take turns going to different characters' point of view who live in the village. And so we have a man who's a truck driver and his wife who is a prostitute. And we have a, um, a young woman who was abused and has ended up um, befriending this wayward boy who we think is the culprit um, and they're so they're very much living on the fringe on the margins and very poor but each making a life in their own way and there's it's told with compassion for those characters so even the ones who are doing bad things I suppose uh, are portrayed if not sympathetically compassionately so that you you sort of see it from their point of view. The language is incredible. It is visceral. It's described as visceral and it, it really is, and brutal. It doesn't shy away from any of the violence of this uh, village. And it, it really did stop me in my tracks, but I loved it. I thought it, it was so tightly written and felt so true and authentic and urgent that it kind of puts all the other books you read into the shade and that's where something like Exciting Times um, just falls a bit flat for me. So this is one of those books that will leave you with a book hangover where it's very hard to know where to go after you read this. What do you, you know, you can't just turn to a, a sort of so-called nice novel um, about rich white people problems. It, you sort of need a something completely different I think or a non-fiction or a palate cleanser. I was yeah really impressed with Hurricane Season. I wouldn't say it's a light read or an easy read and it won't be to everyone's taste but um, I thought this was you know outstanding fiction. Yeah I really I didn't know where to go after that but I picked up The Godmother by Anna Law Kerr and translated by Stephanie Smee. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So this is a French crime novel. It actually came out a few years ago, but I hadn't ever heard of it, which it doesn't say anything, but um, it was new to me this year and it's just been made into a movie, which I'm seeing this week coincidentally, but it is a slightly funny crime novel about a grandmother called Patience Portafeu, who's 53 and she's a French Arabic translator and she gets drawn into a crime gang and infiltrates the gang and take, basically has a side hustle making money as a drug smuggler. And so it's tongue in cheek, but it's really interesting. I enjoyed it. It felt very French. It felt, it did take me to Paris. It was completely different from the you know hurricane season and the other novels I've been reading so it was a good change of pace yeah I didn't love it I found it a little bit procedural uh, it's not super fast paced but I enjoyed it just for what it was it was a sort of a trip to Paris and light-hearted which was what I sort of felt like at the time so I sort of recommend it um, I think the movie will be fun so it, but quite a fun read. So that's The Godmother by Anna Law Kerr, translated by Stephanie Smee. And that was it for February. It's basically time for my March wrap up any minute. So um, I'm running about a month behind, but anyway, we'll get there. So let me know what you've been reading and I will see you soon. Bye for now.